Hi, I'm Kayla Hewitt. I'm program coordinator for NAATP. And for the last month, we've been spotlighting longstanding NAATP members as part of our membership month. And today I am so privileged um, to speak with Carrie Farrell, who is um, the CEO and founder of Design Room. Kelly is a national speaker with her focus being on the importance of branding, specifically in the behavioral health field, and how branding really can can unify an organization internally and help provide a foundation for sustainable success. Um, hello, Kelly. Um, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Kayla. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. <laughs> Kelly, why don't you just start out by telling me um, a little bit more about Design Room? Design Room is a branding and design firm that has been focusing on um, behavioral health for the past six years. We were in uh, working in the hospital and healthcare sector for many years, and then we switched over to behavioral health, and it's been a really interesting and fun engagement with our clients in the sector. We find that mission-driven executives and leadership are really inspiring and to do good work for them is really, really rewarding. Well, thank you. You, you really do wonderful work. So, so thank you for, for helping this field. So I want to start out by first talking about um, what a healthy brand is and possibly some tips on how to keep your brand healthy. Um, specifically during this national crisis, um, COVID-19, and, and sustainable afterwards. Yeah, I'm going to talk about, you know, what a healthy brand is. It's, it's more than a logo. It's more than a color palette. It's more than a cool-looking website. A healthy brand inspires uh, alignment with your leadership team. It inspires engagement with your clients. It's um, it's deeper. Um, it's online. It's it, with your mission, vision, values, and it. Um, if you have a healthy brand, you're clearly defined in the market. And if you think about it as it relates to a national crisis, if you have a healthy brand, it it, it can withstand a national crisis. It all of the, you know the 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 block you know the the platform, the building blocks are there. It's not like you're scrambling trying to figure out what to say, who to say, who to say it to, and how to say it to them. Um, leadership understands uh, where their staff is exactly because uh, uh, a healthy brand is built um, around your core inside culture. It's built on, you know, that's where we get the heart of a brand. It's the heart of it. It's from your inside, of inside your organization. So. If you if you have a healthy brand and you there is a national crisis, it's like you can um, apply it to your staff, and if they trust you, which um, you understand them because it's all wrapped around the same thing. Um, leadership is in alignment with them; they make the better choices. And then on the outside and through your patients, they recognize you have a united front. And this is uh, super important during a national crisis. So. I totally agree with that. Um, and I think that that's perfect with, um, with NAADP's leadership, with Marvin Ventrell and with Katie Strand. This whole team trusts them and um, it just shows. And I think everything that we're doing, we, we really have a lot of trust in our leadership. So uh, I, that's spot on with, with how we feel as well. So at the start of the coronavirus, organizations and really every industry responded to their audience by sending personalized COVID-19 responses. And specifically for addiction treatment providers, that meant um, relaying um, that they were once still open and also the measures that they were taking to keep um, their patients and their staff safe um, to continue to serve their communities. So that leads me into my next question. COVID-19 has forced everyone to adapt their messages and marketing strategies. So what tips would you give a center that is struggling to adapt? So it's, you have it, it's there. Well, don't stop communicating, that's for sure. Adapt. Also, no matter what, 
maintain uh, consistency and uh, a continuity in your communications internally and externally. Just return to your core values. They're there. Everybody's in a panic, right? Just return to your core values, level set, because you're building brands on core values. Even if we work with a startup and if they have core values, you can build a healthy brand. You don't even need a mission and a vision. If they have core values, three, four of them, you can build a really solid brand. Turn to that and understand that your audience is like, you know, they're, what they're experiencing and don't sell, sell, sell in your messaging. Be humanistic. Remember, they're people, they're a little nervous. Everybody is, you know, a little nervous. And I'm sure this has already been said, um, you know, many, many times, but we forget. Just be humanistic, be personal, go back to the basics, and then remind yourself what you stand for in the market, what makes you different, and align that with your core values. That's great. So, so my last question is, um, you know, NAATP is working really hard to be able to provide resources and guidance to our members and at the field of large, um, especially through our, our free webinars, our resource page, our connection platforms. We've been really trying to partner with other industry associations, um, really just in order to genuinely um, help and support our field. So, so why do you think that collaboration and connection are really more important than ever. It's the uh, so what I find is the pandemic has affected every everyone, and we need to support each other. And you know everybody's going to have a little different way of doing that. Um, I just reach out. I mean, so to me, it's personal. Um, I've been on 120 person Zoom calls, and I've orchestrated and organized. Three persons, one on ones. I brought two P, I facilitated conversations through the meaningful conversations to connect people and be intentional about it. It's not always comfortable. Like I'll, I'll email people that I think I want to put a small group together and they'll say, why? What's this for? And I'll just say, it's for fun. You know, it's just for fun. Let's just get on the call and let's just connect and see if we can help each other. Not business, just support each other and connect, you know, as as humans and make it personal. Mm -hmm. hmm. so. Yeah, you know, I think with with canceling our conference this year, we were we were really disappointed that like that um, that connection was going to be lost. So I think that's why we ramped up ramped up all of this mm -hmm. this connection because we were like we st we still have to have this even though we want um, this in person connection to come back we, we still have to um, facilitate um, facilitate this with our members because it's just it's just so important um, to stay connected Kelly thank you so much for your time I, I really think that that what you said um, is just going to be really helpful to our members that are just trying to really like understand what to say and what to do and, and how to connect with their audience. And I think this is just a really great starting point. And um, I just thank you so much for sitting down with me today. We appreciate your, your support as an NAATP um, supporter member. You know that National Association of Addiction Treatment Providers has a soft spot in my heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do.